Hello and you're very welcome to this video in our series on market failure for IB Economics. In this video we're going to be building on the last video where we looked at negative production externalities and now we're going to be evaluating using diagrams what policy response to market by policies um, and government regulation can be used to correct these negative production externalities. If you haven't watched the previous video on negative production externalities please pause this video and go back and watch that now so you have an understanding of what they are. Briefly what we were looking at is the idea of a cement factory. Um, that dumps waste in the ocean and emits smoke in the air uh, and when it's producing its uh, cement, therefore creating an external cost um, to society. As we saw, we looked at the graph here, that in the free market, the firm operates at the point PMQM. However, because of this external cost involved, i.e. the pollution that this firm is doing, this means that we uh, the firm has a marginal social cost as well. So it would be better if the firm was to produce less at a higher price, shown to us there in the diagram of P opt and Q opt there, the higher price there for covering the external cost involved. So, now what we need to think about is how can society alter the price and quantity to move us from the point of PMQM to the point of P opt Q opt? Pause the video there now, have a think about it and see if there's any ideas you can think of that the government could do to fix this or society could do to fix this. When you're ready, press play to continue. Okie dokie, so there are two main methods of correcting negative production externalities. They are number one, government regulations, and number two, market-based policies. Starting off with our government regulations, basically government can set re regulations or rules, so to speak, or leg enact legislation, that's in other words, putting in laws, to reduce the marginal social costs created by firms in their production. Regulations rarely aim to completely outright ban pollution, but the aim is more to limit or reduce the amount of pollution involved rather than to absolutely completely eradicate it. There's different types of regulations that can be used. For example, they can limit the emission of pollutants by setting a maximum level of pollutants that can be permitted, or they can limit the output, the, sorry, the quantity of output the firm can actually make, or they can make the firm that's polluting install various green technologies that will reduce the emissions uh, that they are producing. Regardless of what the option um, uh, is actually chose, the intended aim is always going to be the same. It's going to be to shift the marginal private, uh, sorry, marginal blah, 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 English, the marginal private cost curve to the marginal social cost curve. Now, why are we moving the marginal private cost curve up to the social cost? Why is it not the other way around? Well, the simple reason behind that is because we want to reach the point of P, P opt Q opt. Okay, we want to move away from our PMQM to the idea of P opt Q opt. As you can see in the diagram there, so we are originally free market has a PMQM. We want to move the MPC curve up to the MSC curve so we can get to our point of P opt Q opt. That's why we move it that way and not the other way around. So, how do regulations achieve this overall aim? Well, by setting a max level of pollutants, uh, we reduce the amount of production of the good because they can only produce so much. Um, if they're only allowed to pollute so much, causing our marginal private cost curve to uh, shift leftwards towards the mar uh, marginal social cost curve. Limiting the quantity of output produced will bring QM back towards Q opt. Uh, and if pollution firms have to install technologies, that therefore increases the cost of production. And as you know, that is one of our determinants or factors affecting supply. Uh, that means we're going to supply less, shifting our MPC to our MSC. Our second range of options then is market-based policies. And there are two main market-based policies here. Uh, they are taxes and tradable permits. Taxes is something that you'll be fairly familiar with in general to day-to-day life. Day -day life. There's a couple of ways the government could do it. They could impose a tax per unit of output produced or per unit of pollutant emitted. So they're the two different ways of doing it. Uh, in either situation, uh, it would result in an upward shift of the supply or the marginal private cost curve towards the marginal social cost curve. Okay, the optimum best pr uh, tax policy is when the tax is exactly equal to the external costs. However, that isn't always possible as it's very hard to sometimes estimate what the full external costs are. However, that would be the aim. If they manage to find a tax that would be equal to exactly the external cost, that would bring us to a point where demand is equal to our marginal social, uh, demand which is equal to marginal social benefit and marginal private benefit already, that doesn't change, would now intersect with a curve that is our supply equals marginal social cost equals marginal private cost to give our ideal point of P opt and Q opt. Now, a good real life of the, uh, the tax 
used for this purpose will be, have a think about it, even though I might have just showed a hint of it there, whoopsies, it will be the carbon tax. Uh, the carbon tax being an Irish example, but there are many countries around the world that do have a similar carbon tax. A carbon tax is a tax per unit of carbon emissions of fossil fuels. The tax on carbon is the effect of creating incentives for producers to reduce the amount of pollution they create by purchasing less polluting resources, uh, reducing the size of the negative externality and increasing uh, increase the optimum quantity of output. Taxing the output of the polluter does not have this effect. It only reduces the amount of output produced. So that's where the carbon tax would be quite effective in that respect. So as you can see here in this aspect, uh, the a diagram of this, so to speak, um, where we have our original uh, PMQM point there, uh, with free market operations, okay. Uh, we have the um, point there of Q opt one and Q opt two, uh, showing what our marginal social cost curve uh, is, and then what our mo uh, marginal private cost curve plus the tax added on will be. Second is the market based policies. There are two main mechanisms. Uh, sorry, we had that already. The second market based policy is now tradable permits. We've just looked at taxes. These are also known as cap and trade schemes. This is where the government sells permits to firms that actually allow them to pollute but limits the amount of pollution that is able to have in an economy. Um, it's limited by the amount of uh, permits sold by the government and these tra firms can actually trade these permits on the free market. Looking at a slightly different diagram here, this is the supply and demand curve of tradable permits and as you can see we have a fixed supply curve because there's only a limited amount of uh, these tradable permits available. So depending how many is demanded would shift the demand curve up and down increasing or reducing the price of the uh, tradable permits. As I said, supply is perfectly at last as Q1 because supply is limited. As the economy grows, demand for the permits increase and D1 will shift to D2. Um, so therefore the price to pollute increases. As the price to pollute increases, firms are going to try and find alternatives that aren't as polluting, which will lower their costs. Tradable permits and tax on emissions are similar in that they both incentivize firms to reduce their levels of pollution and switch to less polluting resources. So to summarize, correcting negative production externalities involves shifting MPC curve upwards towards the MC, uh, marginal social cost curve through government regulations or market-based policies. For additive efficiency to be achieved, the quantity of the good produced and consumed must fall to Q-opt as price increases to P-opt. So, that brings us to the end of today's lessons, folks, where we looked at the different ways of correcting negative production externalities using market-based policies and government regulations. If you enjoy this video, give it a like. If you have any questions, ask below in the comments. And of course, please, please, please give the video, sorry, not the video, give the channel a subscription. That's not English. Please subscribe to the channel. There we go. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video now. Bye now. Thank you. Bye-bye.